In this video, I want to talk about one of the biggest revolutionary concepts with regard to animals that I teach. And this concept is can be taken in the wrong way, I want to say. It's it has to do with how animals process pain in contrast to how we process pain and how we perceive pain. A lot of what people immediately jump to whenever I say that animals aren't suffering in the way that we do is that I'm saying that animals don't feel or that they're somehow less than. And that's not what I'm saying. What, what I am saying is that they do process pain much differently. They manage it much differently than we do. They experience every inch of their pain and they don't resist it and they don't perceive it to be bad or good. They're just in it. And it's very much the same way with with babies. They're, they operate on, on such similar vibrations because both of them they'll let you know if they're in excruciating pain a baby will cry an animal will moan or they'll grunt or or they'll they'll limp they're not going to they they cannot hide it like we do we hide a lot of our pain we suppress a lot of our pain we push it down and our animals are here to reflect the truth. They're here to let us know the depths of our suffering by just being them and that they don't have to suffer like we are <clears throat> to get the point across. They, We see an animal on the side of a street um, limping along. There's no one there to love on this animal. There's no one there to care for it that brings up our pain. That brings up painful memories of when we were helpless as maybe children and we didn't have anyone there for us to love us and, and to hold us in the ways that we needed, whether it was physically and or emotionally. And most of the time it was emotionally that we needed someone there. And so we go to great lengths to rescue animals sometimes and we go to great lengths to make sure that they're comfortable that they're loved that they're taken care of that they have the best life that they could ever ever imagine and what we're doing is we're seeking to give that part of ourselves that they're reflecting to us that love and that great life that we always wanted so this is a concept that is somewhat painful, somewhat painful to embrace, to even decide whether or not it resonates and even to take something like this in because what it does is we ultimately want a being to relate to in our pain. We want uh, situations that can validate that that we're not alone, that, that can remind us that we're not alone. And if we see animals who look like they're suffering, then it's like, oh my God, I've on a, on a subconscious level, we're thinking I've been there. I can help you. <clears throat> and so this this essentially what we're doing when this happens is we're we're wanting to rescue ourselves and to be there for ourselves but we don't know how so we do it in the form of rescuing animals or we do it in the form of making sure they're comfortable making sure they have everything they need so what happens is when 
when I mention that they process pain differently and that they don't suffer like we do, that creates a gap of separation between between us and and the animal that we've we've the animals that we've been perceiving as suffering that that are that are in our same boat. And if they're not in the same boat with us, then that means that we're going to be more alone. And that's the logic of our emotions that respond to this is oh no, I'm going to be more alone in my pain because I want to be able to have others who have suffered with me so I could feel less alone, so we can help each other. So that's the biggest trigger that comes up in this concept is that I'm, I'm now even more alone after hearing this because the animals that I thought were suffering aren't suffering as bad as I am. And that puts me in a state of helplessness because that means that that I'm not helping them as much as I thought. And if I'm not helping them, then I have no purpose and I'm worthless. There are these deep beliefs underneath underneath these emotions like this that <clears throat> being there for these animals in this way somehow gives gives that purpose and if that were to be taken away then we will be left alone and purposeless and I'm definitely I want to clarify that rescue is very important and making sure animals lives are comfortable is a beautiful gift that they're giving us because they are facilitating an interaction with ourselves in this way and it's good that we that we experience it like this and that we see animals in this way and I'm just adding a little bit of extra perspective to it because if we can raise the awareness and how we view our animals and animals in general then we raise more self-awareness and we raise the vibration of this planet we raise the vibration up from suffering and out of it but if we are addicted to suffering we won't want to see this message we'll want to keep seeing suffering so we can keep rescuing suffering and per and continuing to perpetuate the, the pain and continue to participate in the cycle. It takes courage to see things in a different way and it, and it can't happen overnight and, it's, and it shouldn't. It's something that takes time and it should happen on your own time. And this is just planting the seed for so much more to be revealed. Animals are so special. Animals in nature are the bridge between heaven and earth. They're the bridge between non-attachment and attachment. And they help buffer our experience here. They help make it what it is. They help make it bearable. They help us breathe life in and to see it in new ways and and to just and to imagine adding an even a new element to that that oh my gosh when I when I interact with animals I am interacting with all these different parts of myself that I don't know how to interact with safely in any other way and how beautiful is that that we're connecting with ourselves through them and it's different with animals than it is with people because animals are closer to God and source energy and the, um, the higher power energies. They're, they're, they operate on the vibration of babies, which is why we love them so much. I mean, they, they pull us back to who we are. And they uncover things that might be uncomfortable. They, and they also uncover very beautiful things. So, thank you so much for watching. And should you need 
a reading for your babies or any further emotional insights into your animal's world or your world, you can find me at www.intuitivepetcare.com. You can find me on Facebook under Intuitive Pet Care and also a discussion group called What Is My Pet Trained to Tell Me?